This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Jeremy Wolf. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Good Neighbor Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Wolf. And you know, it must be a, a Monday for goodwill and charity because I just had a guest on the podcast uh, to promote an, a great event that's upcoming here in Cooper City called Relay for Life uh, through the American Cancer uh, Foundation or American Cancer Society. And now our next guest, we have AJ Donaldson. And AJ is the founder of the Epic Foundation. And they also do a, a lot of wonderful charitable work in and around the community in South Florida. So excited to get into this today. AJ, thanks so much for joining us. Jeremy, an absolute honor, man. I appreciate you having me. Now oh, the pleasure is all on this side of the screen, as I like to say. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in. So let's get into this. Tell us a little bit about the Epic Foundation, what you guys do, and then we shall go from there. Oh, dude, absolutely. Anytime. Uh, so in general, and of course, thanks again for having me on. It's an honor and a pleasure. I've heard a lot about what you're doing in the world, Cooper City and beyond. Uh, so it's always an honor to me to say that EPIC's action acronym, just like everything else in education, uh, experienced professionals impacting communities. Uh, and the way we're able to make that impact is in three ways, three focuses, scholarships, mentorship and career pathways uh to date we've supported almost 500 kids and we've given away over five hundred thousand dollars in scholarships and programming uh nine years on the way to 10 years of impact and this is now accelerating absolutely love it so how did you found this this great charity that you're working for talk a little bit about the journey that led you up there and how this came to be in the first place. Whew, man, I appreciate that, man. Um, it's a long time. It's been a long time coming in the sense of dynamics of my background in education. And I'm not even just saying as a pseudo educator, but even as a student, a child, uh, you know, going through the school system, had a very strong will, disciplinary mother, you know, Jamaican background. So spare the rods for the child. Uh, all those things are very, very, present. Uh, you couldn't come home with a B and not get a lecture, right? A minuses were still conversations. So it was always high achieving household uh, by way of no choice. And so the dynamics of going through this whole process, graduate, top of my class, 4.0 GPA, 1400 SAT score, end up getting an academic scholarship to the University of Miami. And typically, if I was in my home office, you'd see my University of Miami football jersey behind me, but I'm out on assignment and I didn't want to miss this opportunity again. Uh, but graduating, going to University of Miami, and walking onto the football team, made it uh, not just as a GPA booster, but even made my way all the way up to the starting fullback position. Uh, 240 pounds, running a 4'7", knocking people's heads off. Uh, <laughs> but also while playing jazz saxophone, this is the whole well-rounded nest that my mom gave me. And I say all that because once I graduated, I was riddled with $60,000 worth of debt. Despite my academic prowess, despite all the long transcript that I had, I was still in debt. And it didn't make sense to me because I said, well, I did everything the school system told me to do. And yet school was not enough. And so from that day forth, I started to just get into my double engineering degree, hated it, like the other 72% of Americans who don't work in their field of study. What's going on with that? 27%, that means you're getting an F minus in that class. Uh, and so the dynamics of coming out and saying, what can I do to make sure the next generation does not fall into that same trap of compound daily interest, AKA loans, Sally Mae, Navi, and all those other things. Uh, we started tutoring. I started doing tutoring classes. I was, I was doing really, really well. I had a half million dollar contract with the Southern Tribe of Florida, a lot of private clients. You know, we worked from, for kids from you know, high socioeconomical backgrounds where they've got made houses and $10,000 palm trees in front of their house, all the way to the fact of low socioeconomical situations where they're living not with grandma, but with great grandma, because mom and grandma are so busy working. With that said, I recognize something in particular that not everyone could afford the supplemental education that they needed. And that's where Epic was born. It was born as a subsidiary. It was born as a nonprofit arm of my for-profit United Mentors tutoring. And at that point when COVID hit, whoop, Epic took off. 
and our scholarships became emergency funds. Next, you know, we're talking to Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Boy, all these other nonprofit organizations. And fast forward to today, Epic has now become like the NFL of education, where we're an organization of organizations. So you started, so you went to school for compute, uh, for double engineering degree. Electrical and audio, yes. I was actually initially in computer and electrical engineering at University of Florida for the first couple of years. I did not did not last in that field very long. I ended up <laughs> business myself. So you, you you were is that what you got the degree in, or did you shift to education in college? It was it happened, oh. it happened after you were already in the workforce in engineering. So I graduated with a double engineering degree. I went on the tours. I went on the interviews anywhere from IBM to Texas Instrument, and absolutely hated every part of that experience. It just didn't suit my personality at all. It's like, hey, I want to talk to him about this beforehand with that. <laughs> so I come out of that situation and dude, at first I started hustling. I was doing real estate, mortgages, you know, all these different things, LMM, MLM, multi-level marketing, just trying to figure out what, what I was going to be doing for the rest of my day to provide for myself, right? At an early age of 21, 22 years old. So that's how this kind of went about. It was not the fact that I went to school for education. Uh, I literally ran from being an educator, despite my mom being a music teacher, despite my grandmother being an educator in Jamaica. Uh, I was like, no, y'all don't get paid enough. So I'm going to do something else. <laughs> so I want to I want to talk a little more about Ep the Epic Foundation and the mechanics of what you do. Obviously, it's an institution designed and born out of trying to help folks pay for their higher higher education and get scholarships and, and not have to deal with what you experienced, uh, which is the $60,000 in debt, having done everything right. So tell us a little bit about the institution or Epic Foundation, a little bit more specific about how it works, how people can get involved, Absolutely. where you touch upon. I know it's you're based in South Florida. Is this something that's a, a, a national operation? Tell us a little bit more about the internal workings of Epic. Oh, beautiful, man. No, I appreciate that. Um, yes, this is a local South Florida organization that is now growing to a national and even international modeling. So right now, literally as we speak, we are in the midst of this dynamic model where I mentioned earlier, it's an organization of, of organizations. So there are a ton of nonprofit organizations here in South Florida alone, much less throughout the entire U.S. And to us, it was like, well, why start another organization that is going to compete right, for the resources and funding that is out there, right? And it is competition that's causing limitations for each of these organizations. We said, well, we would be stronger together. So why not go around and actually build relationships with these founders, with these CEOs, and see how we can serve them best? If it's consulting, if it's alignment, if it's what we call ecosystem merging, because one plus one does not equal two, it equals a trillion, and there's a lot more we can do to the social good of this community and beyond. Now, with all of that said, how do you get involved? Just follow us online at Epic South Florida on Instagram, Epic SFL on Facebook. You know, that is the easiest and quickest way to get a hold of us. DM us, go to our website, contact form, epicsouthflorida.org. It's very simple to get involved. And the dynamics of if you have a favorite charity that you love and that you serve and you support, Tell us about them because we'd love to meet them. We'd love to find out about what they do and if we can align. And as long as it falls under scholarships, the money, the finances, the great equalizer here in America, mentorship, which is the time we spend with these kids, these young people, especially when it comes to a platform of education. And here's a key, career pathways. And to your point, yes, it started off as a scholarship fund, helping these young people seek these scholarships so they didn't end up in debt, riddled in debt, starting their careers. But what is evolved to, that's still present, that's the foundation of our foundation. But what it's evolved to now is helping expose more kids to all of the viable options that are out there that they have no idea about. Just like my good friend Jeremiah, right? He's a HVAC, AC technician, doing very well financially for himself, I may say. So why not expose these kids earlier on? What does America look like if we don't have construction? We don't have people building buildings. Right. You don't necessarily have to go to a four, six and eight year degree to start in these fields of study. And for me, that is the exposure that I wish I had. Jeremy, I'm sure you wish somebody would have told you about some of these <laughs> options back in the day when you were in high school doing trigonometry and <laughs> never use ever again. 
Uh, the dynamics of that is we want to make sure that we are everything in supplement to the system. We have become, as the young people have told me, Donald, so you're everything the school system's not. When did it become apparent to you mm. as you were building Epic Foundation that helping to amplify voices already in existence and creating a, a network, a network, a larger network of existing networks was the best way to do this. Cause I, I'm sure that you didn't start there, right? You started with the scholarship fund and everything was born out of that. Did right. that come after COVID before COVID? Oh, great question, man. Very intuitive of you. So um, like you said, we start off with scholarship fund, and why? Because Epic was, a nonprofit arm of United Mentors, my for-profit business, tutoring everywhere throughout South Florida. And what we did as the founder and CEO of United Mentors, it was we put 10% of our profit into that social initiative, right? Into ensuring that no matter what the child social economical situation is, that we could help bridge the gap. The more and more we got involved in education, the more and more we learned about what was going on and the deficits. Again, school has its place, but school isn't the end all to be all, you know, Jeremy, your education didn't start at school. You didn't utter your first words at school, right? And I bet your education didn't end when you left school either. So why do we call it an education system? So in that deficit, in those gaps, in the evolving schooling, especially because of COVID, we just continue to evolve and fill these gaps that we found. And to your point, yes, the scholarship fund transition right as COVID happened into emergency funds. And at that point, we started to realize more deficits. So some of these kids we had supported from scholarships and financial aid then said, well, Donaldson, we need help with mentorship. It was tutoring, SAT prep. Well, you know, obviously I have a very diverse background in that. So we started to be able to associate some of those funds to whatever company they needed help in in that specific lane to make sure they had the time, right, to spend with somebody with an expertise to get to where they needed to go in order to achieve. And then one more evolution in 2022, these kids needed jobs, right? Graduated for college or not, it doesn't matter. The time is on no one's side. These kids are starting to become young adults and they are working at Starbucks, right? It's like, well, this kid is extremely gifted with cars. Let's get him into auto mechanics. Let's shift some of these funds over there instead of just sending it to the colleges and university. And that's how the career pathways evolved in 2022. And now we're just accelerating because we have a ton of testimonies, kids that are working on jobs, kids that didn't even have degrees and they're working in accounting. Oh my goodness. So that is what this has all been about. And yes, uh, even though we envisioned this prior to COVID, COVID accelerated us and it has been an incredible journey. So what do you think it was about COVID that created this, I guess, perfect storm or this impetus for mm. transitioning epic in the direction it went. Do you think it had something to do with the fact that everybody was kind of plucked out of their physical environments and everything went digital and it was like, wow, you know, there's talk. What do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, dude, I could, I could unpack this all day long. How much time you got? Oh, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll narrow it down to two things. First and foremost, like you said, they got plucked out of their normal environment. They're at home, but also they're at home with their kids. Mm. And because of that, virtual learning took off. It wasn't like people weren't on Zoom doing virtual learning before, right? Uh, Khan Academy, all that stuff was already in place, but it accelerated the household's knowingness of what's missing in their schooling. Now mom and dad is like, what the heck is this? What? What? <laughs> it gave me a, a deeper appreciation for the role that teachers play oh, in our kids' lives. Because just having my, my kids at home and, and watching them go through that process and seeing what the teachers dealt with. I mean, at the time, my kids were, I guess, six and eight-ish. Mm -hmm. So they were in that phase where the attention span is not uh, quite developed yet. So right. I would watch classes of 20 kids on Zoom and, and I'm sitting there like, telling my son to pay attention and woo, yeah, fun, fun, fun. Oh, imagine, yeah, in a corporate learning environment too. I mean, face to face in front of each other, right? Feeding off each other's energy. So big shout out to all of our educators and our teachers out there for sure. And honestly, dude, I never speak ill in a sense of, well, you know, school is, we need to end school. No, no, listen, school has its place. If you've got that child whose dog died from a brain aneurysm and just became very passionate about the human brain and wants to become a neuroscientist and all that stuff, Absolutely. You need to go to school. You need to go to college. You need 19 years of education before you touch this big head of mine. So please <laughs> get your grades up, right? Absolutely.
But what about the other 97% of students that that's just not their calling? That's just not their purpose, right? That is not what they want to do, nor are they gifted in doing so. Why do we have them in classes learning trigonometry, calculus, and all these things that are dedicated to engineering, aerospace, science, all those other things, like myself, yet I am doing nothing in engineering outside of the fact that I really like math. I can help these young people to take very complicated things and simplify it to the elementary level. So to your point, that time that they got back and having to be exposed to what is and is not schooling versus just the assumption that as long as I drop my kids off in class, I'm a good parent, I've done my job, pat myself on the back, let me go to work and earn money. We were forced to deal with both at the same time and it was a whole perspective change and shift. It was exposure, it was exposure. Independent of that, it was also the fact that a lot of parents were so busy working, it was difficult to try to balance that work and that life when it comes to their, their child's school. And this is where the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village. It can't be just mom and dad. You have a specific role, right? It can't just be the teacher. They have a specific role. And a lot of those responsibilities have also been removed from them because of liabilities. So where are these kids going to get that extra help that they need? What happens when mom and dad can't afford tutoring or any of those other supplements? What then? And I heard a phrase, and I'll, I'll, I'll digress from here, but as much as we all know that phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, to the point it's almost cliche, it's almost taboo. We've heard it our whole lives. We thought the education system invented it. That is not true. Come to find out later on during COVID after the George Floyd situation, and on MLK Day, I wanted to say this real quick. That they finally started to honor that phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, as an African proverb. And Jeremy, we can both agree, and anybody who's listening, we can both agree, there's more, like, more, more, more likely that, or most likely more than one, just uh, one African proverb. So again, during COVID in that time, we had a chance to do some research. We find out that it was a precursor. It was a warning. It says, it takes a village to raise a child. And the child not embraced by its village will burn it down to fill its warmth. That's deep. That's what we're experiencing. These kids that are falling through the proverbial cracks, that is more like a black hole, when this young person then reimmerses as an adult with access, this is why we have code red. This is why we have code black now in the classrooms, because these are kids we didn't embrace. Well, it's not my child. But they're part of your village, they're part of your society. And if we don't do something about it, we're all in trouble. Yeah, as, as our society just gets more technological, there's more social media, there's more noise, yes. it become, people become more and more distant from the things that really bond us together, which is you know, community, family, yes. uh, building relationships. And it's a jungle out there, it really is. And it's important to build these bonds in our great communities. And I think everything you're doing is wonderful. It's one of the reasons why we have this platform is to, again, raise awareness for small business owners and, and local leaders and institutions and, and really connect them and engage with the community in ways that they don't typically do with all the noise that's out there nowadays. So mm. yeah, tr truly a pleasure to have you on. And I'm sure we could we can go talk about the education system and everything for hours upon end. But unfortunately, yeah. We don't have that much time. So before we wrap up here, AJ, share with us again how we could learn more about Epic Foundation. Uh, I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but maybe maybe your website, mm -hmm. uh, contact information. Let us know how we could learn more and reach you guys. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and it's funny you say contact information like anybody, you know, calls businesses. Everything's online, right? You're dealing with AI and all that stuff. So I default to the website, you know, Epic. You guys see all those spelled out Epic South Florida. Once again, spelled all the way out. Um, dot org. You know, you go to our website and everything is there. Contact form, social media, anything you, you need. The scholarship form for your child. You can go to programs uh, and click that mentorship and find a mentor, right? You can submit request forms. And let me tell you all something. This is why I mentioned the whole organization of organizations, because if we don't have it, we know somebody who does. That is the absolute truth. We have amassed a massive massive ecosystem of incredibly heart-centered, integrous organizations that work with children, right? And young people and job source and all these different opportunities, job readiness, all these different opportunities to be, help our children because why the heck do we have them in school in the first place? But to get a job and get the heck out of mom and dad's house one day. <laughs> so, you know, if you need any level of support, it does not matter 
your social economical status. It does not. Low, moderate, high, it does not matter. We have ways of supporting you through our ecosystem of people. Go to our website, go to our social media, like, subscribe, follow, all the things. And just remember, ask for help, right? You say, here, if you hear something, you see something, say something. It's the same thing in your own life. It doesn't matter what's going on. Reach out for support because Epic is here and we are an entire village to help you. Love it. Love it. We will, of course, link in the description to your contact information for those that missed that. AJ, appreciate all the good work you're doing in our great community. Thanks for coming on the show. Happy to have had the chance to get to know you a little bit and learn more about the Epic Foundation. So again, thanks for joining us. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in. And we will catch you next time. Everyone take care. Thanks for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast, Cooper City. To nominate your favorite local business to be featured on the show, go to GNPCooperCity.com. That's GNPCooperCity.com. Or call 954-231-3170.